This is Ronald Coleman inviting you to radio's most dramatic half hour, Favorite Story. We're going to take you for a ride. No, not the kind of ride you might get from a gangster. That could be a very relaxing experience compared with what happens on this ride. You'll be accompanied by a headless horseman, the woman in white, and every moaning and groaning ghost of the eastern seaboard. As you may have guessed, our favorite story this week is Washington Irving's Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Before this half hour is over, Ichabod Crane will again shiver through the Sleepy Hollow graveyard on the most frightful mission of his life. Yes, the adventure of Ichabod Crane is one of the finest stories from the early days of this republic. And we were very happy when our good friend Walter Houston chose it as his favorite story. Walter has brought to life many of the characters of colonial days, among them Rip Van Winkle and Peter Stuyvesant in Knickerbocker Holiday. Now, are you ready? We're going to the one spot in these United States which is a collector's item for lovers of good nightmares. <laughs> Its name is Sleepy Hollow. It's a small glen on the east bank of the Hudson River, not far from Tarrytown, New York. One of the quietest places in the world. And on summer afternoons, one of the loveliest. But on dark nights, it changes. You can hear strange music and voices in the air. The stars fall and meteors shoot more often across this valley than in any other part of the country. Listen. Well, maybe it's the wind. Maybe not. But folks from Tarrytown will tell you it's a British major, Andre by name, who was caught by the Americans with the wrong papers in his boots, on the wrong side of the lines. He's there to this day, all bloody with a great rent in his uniform, hanging from a tulip tree. In Sleepy Hollow. Oh, that? Well, it might be the sound the brook makes as it eddies past that rock. Or it might be the woman in white who perished a century ago in the snow, in the dark, in Sleepy Hollow. Why don't you visit there some night when the sky is black? It's at Raven Rock you'll find her. And if you listen well, you'll hear her soft voice wailing in the darkness. You'll hear her soft voice wailing in the darkness. But the most famous of all the legends of Sleepy Hollow concerns a Hessian soldier who, for three pounds ten a month, came to this quiet valley to fight for King George III. And that sound? Well, maybe it's thunder. Maybe... Or it could be an ancient echo of a cannonball, a blast which hit that Hessian trooper in the days of the Great Revolution and carried away his... his head. And anybody, anybody who's been within a hundred miles of this famous hollow will tell you that the Hessian trooper, the headless horseman, rides in search of his head. <laughs> Not far from Sleepy Hollow, there's a schoolhouse. And early in our country's history, it had a schoolmaster, name of Ichabod Crane. All right, children, repeat after me. A penny saved is a penny earned. A penny saved is a penny earned. Very good, very good. Next, a stitch in time saves nine. A stitch in time saves nine. Excellent. Now, honesty is the best policy. Why? Why is honesty the best policy? Why, young man? Why, indeed? Because the honest man sleeps at night with no ghost to haunt him. Now, let us have this maxim, and all together now, honesty, honesty is, is the, the best, best policy. policy. That was very good, very good. Now, if you'll turn hey, to the... Hey, give me that. Aha! Uh -huh. Ow! No spitballs in my classroom. 
You'll remember that boy and thank me for it the longest day you live. Now, class, we will... Yes, yes, who is it? Uh, Mr. Kibbard, can I see you, Mr. Kibbard? Certainly, certainly. Children, I'm stepping out of the room for a moment. You will turn to page 74 in your book of maxims and begin to memorize the first three on the page. In silence. Oh, you're the, the hired man over at the Van Tassels, aren't you? Has, uh, has Katrina sent me a love message? Uh, Miss Katrina and her papa sent me over to tell you that you were supposed to come over to their house tonight. They do? Uh, I mean, I am. Uh, they'd be holding a quilt and frolic. Oh, how lovely. How perfectly lovely. Who else is invited? Well, let's see. There'd be the Mullers and Crossers and uh, Mr. Van Ripper and Mr. Brown, his lady. Oh, yes. Anyone else? Any other <clears throat> men? Uh, if you mean Mr. Brom Bones, is he coming? Yes, is Brom Bones coming too? <laughs> uh, he'll be there, sure. Saw him curing his horse a little while ago. Sure looks good on that horse, don't he, though? He's the handsomest fella I ever yes, did see. Yes, that's all. That's enough. I know all about Brom Bones. Katrina and her father want to see us both together. That's so they can perceive how much more desirable I would be for a husband and son-in-law than Brom Bones. Yes, that's it. That's exactly it. Uh, it starts early, by right sundown. Uh, Miss Katrina says you shouldn't be late. Oh, I'll be there on time in plenty of time. And ahead of Brom Bones, too. <laughs> Mr. Van Ripper. Huh? Oh, you startled me, Ichabod. Oh, I'm sorry. What do you Mr. want, you scarecrow? Whatever you want, the answer's no. Uh, Mr. Van Ripper, I'm going to a quilting frolic this evening. Where? At Mr. Van Tassel's farm. And the old boy invited you? Yes, yes. He must be crazier than I thought. I fancy he's invited me for his daughter, Katrina Van Tassel. Then he has gone crazy. Uh, uh, there, there, there's one favor I want to ask you, Mr. Van Ripper. I'll be returning rather late this evening, and Van Tassel's is quite far, and I, I should like to borrow a horse. Oh, you would? Yes. Well, my first answer would be no. Oh. But if I lend you a horse, there is the possibility that you might fall out of the saddle and break your neck, well, I... which would end the plague of Ichabod Crane in the whole countryside. <laughs> so, for the possible betterment of the community, I will lend you a horse, Ichabod. Oh, you will? Uh-huh. Well, that's, that's very generous of you, Mr. Van Ripper. Uh, what, what horse am I to use? The large roan with the white forehead? The, the gray mare? No, the... no, no. I have a much better horse in mind for you, Ichabod. Oh, really? Gunpowder is the horse for you. Gunpowder? That's right. But he's slightly swayback, isn't he? Better for speed. And a, a little blind? Sharp ears, that horse. Doesn't he limp? Best for riding in hilly country. Knows his way around. Oh, yes, but perhaps if you could let me have a different horse. You mean you don't want to accept gunpowder? No, 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 no. Certainly not indeed. No, I... Well, then it's all settled. You ride gunpowder. Yes, I ride gunpowder. Beautiful afternoon, gunpowder. A beautiful afternoon. Oh, oh, and tonight. Oh, tonight. Katrina Van Tassel and I will dance and eat and... Oh, do you know what else? Oh, oh but of course you couldn't. Oh, no. You're just a horse. Tonight, gunpowder, I'm going to kiss Katrina. Oh, oh you're wrong, gunpowder. I am. I definitely am going to kiss Katrina tonight. <laughs> oh, Katrina and I will be married, married, married. Katrina and I will be married before the winter's up, before the winter's up. Katrina and I will be married, and I will be rich. <laughs> yes, nice, nice, yes, very nice. <sighs>
Uh, uh, yes, uh, Has everyone arrived? Are all the guests here? Why, uh, 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 oh, I believe so. Yes, 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 I believe so. Oh, 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 oh you mean... I'm worried. He wouldn't be late, especially for the food. Ah, oh, my greetings, Mr. Van Tassel. And a sweet good evening to you, Katrina. Oh, Ichabod. <laughs> You're here at last. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm here. Uh, welcome, schoolmaster. Welcome. Help yourself to anything. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I believe I shall. I, 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 Katrina, would you join me at the table? <laughs> of course, Ichabod. Yes. Of course. Oh, thank you, Katrina. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Hello, Katrina. Well. Mr. Brom Bone. Good evening, Brom. Good evening. Say, Ichabod, is that yours, that thing in the stable? Oh, you mean gunpowder? 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 Is that what you call him? That's right. <laughs> Careful he doesn't explode, school teacher. That horse should be stuffed and put in a museum. Did he really get you here? He certainly did. He most very certainly brought me here. I'm glad you're here, Ichabod. Oh, well. <laughs> Miracle, absolute miracle. Rum Bones, you can't talk that way about Ichabod's horse. Hans von Ripper says there's more lurking devil in gunpowder than in any young filly in the country, and I believe him. Well, Katrina, are we going to eat? Ichabod and I are eating together. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, Katrina and I are eating together. <laughs> together. <laughs> Katrina? Ichabod has just asked me to dance with him. He's a very good dancer. Ichabod, this is our dance. Oh, yes, yes, this is our dance. Come along, Katrina. See you later, Mr. Bone. Uh, schoolmaster is doing pretty well, Brian. Yeah. No offense. I wonder how that undernourished little suckling could dance off with the prettiest girl here. Undernourished? And that school teacher has the appetite of a baby elephant. I watched him at the table, and he didn't stop until he'd completely demolished one whole hind quarter of a two-year sow. Plump as a partridge, she is. Fresh 18. Eh, prettiest foot and ankle in the country around. Father's rich, too. Any man marry her, do himself fine for life. Taking a fancy to that goose of a schoolmaster. Why don't you get rid of Ichabod? Kill him? I couldn't do that. There are less drastic ways of getting rid of people, but just as permanent. Brom, I wonder if the schoolmaster believes in ghost stories. Well, what if he does? Seen him hurrying home at night, scared of his own shadow. Trembles. Always trembles. Yeah? What does that to do with me? There's one answer for you, Brom boy. Scare him out of town. Think it over, Brom. Scare him out of town. Scare him out of town. Yeah. The rest of the boys will help you. We'll all help you. Scare him out of town. <laughs> Bringing you Walter Houston's favorite story this week, Washington Irving's Legend of Sleepy Hollow. And it brings us into intimate acquaintance with the slightly objectionable schoolmaster, Ichabod Crane. And since Ichabod is making eyes at one of the most beautiful young ladies in the neighborhood, certain envious young gentlemen from thereabouts would like to get rid of Ichabod. And they're going to work on him right now, in the sitting room of the Van Tassels. Here's favorite story, Act Two. <laughs> But when it comes to storytelling, and well, and no women. <laughs> no need women for storytelling. You, Hans, you always have a good tale to tell. Yes, Van Ripper, tell us. Yes, uh, tell us, Mr. Van Ripper. <clears throat> well, that tulip tree in the center of Hollow Road, Major Andre's tree. You know it, Ichabod? Um, Major Andre's tree, yes. Uh -huh. I've seen him. 
All bloody, with a great rent in his uniform, hanging on that tulip tree. And some nights, if the wind's just right, and the air's cool, and you haven't your wits about you, you'll hear his great voice throwing out his mighty curse. Stay! Stay here with me! Forever! Forever? That's a long time. Uh, but what about the lost woman? The lost woman. Yes, yes. At Raven Rock, you'll find her of any evening. Just as she was that night when she perished in the snow. And she comes back. Oh, yes. And you'll hear a soft voice wailing in the darkness. Wailing in the darkness. My, what an unpleasant thing to do, isn't it? Gentlemen, there's no story to compare with the one about the headless Hessian. Headless Hessian? His body was buried in the churchyard. But every night he goes riding, looking for his head. Gallops all over the countryside. Galloping Hessian. Galloping Hessian? Headless horseman. Headless horseman? Been seen lately, too. On his black horse. All in black. And no head. No head? My. No head. Just moonlight where his head should have been. Wasn't more than two months ago I met this galloping Hessian. You did, Brom? He had his head with him, but he was carrying it under his arm. What, what, what did you do? Do? Why, I just looked right at him and where his head wasn't, and I told him my horse, Daredevil, could outrun any horse in the valley, and I offered to race him. You actually raced the headless horseman? Sure, I raced him, but he gave up, because he knew he couldn't beat my horse, Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you frightened? Mr. Brom Bones frightened me? I'm not scared of anything. Not even of ghosts without heads? With or without a head. No ghost can scare me. Oh, I, I, I don't think I'd be frightened either. Speaking, and I, uh, Katrina, could we get away from the others just a moment? Oh, Ichabod, I, I, I'm surprised. Please, I have something very important to say to you before I leave here tonight. Please. Well, in the cloakroom, no one can see us. Oh, good, fine, excellent. Oh. <laughs> now, Ichabod, we're alone. Yes, Katrina, alone, you and I, for the first time this evening. You said you had something very important to say to me, Ichabod. What is it? It's very difficult to speak when you're so near to me, Katrina. Very difficult. I... I... Ichabod Crane, you aren't going to take advantage of me, are you? Oh, no, 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 indeed, night, my dear Katrina. I should say not, no, indeed, no, 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 no. But I can kiss you. Kiss me? Oh, after tonight, I know it is only a matter of a very short while until you and I are married. Ichabod Crane, don't you come a step nearer. And now I know that you love me, and I... Katrina... Katrina, my love. I'm not your love. I never was and I never shall be. But, but tonight you acted you so that I... You were invited tonight only to help Mr. Brom Bones make up his mind about me. And Brom I never... Bones? You only wanted me here to make him jealous. To make no! Him... Now, now, Mr. Van Tassel... So you... this is what you're doing, come on, Brad. Now, now, Mr. Van Tassel, Katrina and I were only... Out, Mr. Ickerman, Brad, out! Out, please, I... Out, but I out! Only... Out, I say! Mr. Van Tassel... And here is your hat... And your coat. But I only was... And your umbrella. Oh, but I only... And was... never come near my daughter again. Oh. Oh. And get that broken down old plow horse out of my barn. Come on, you old flea bit nag. We're leaving here. Well, horse, come, come, move. Move. Spend all your time dreaming of mountains of corn and oats and whole valleys of timothy and clover. Oh, move. We must get home sometime tonight. Oh. Oh. What was that? What? Oh. Oh. Just, just a hoot howl, I guess. Gunpowder, don't waste time. Let's get home. We must get home. Oh, Katrina and I... Won't be married. Won't be married. 
Why do you stop, horse? Move, move! It's... It's Major Andre's tree. Oh. oh. I've seen him. All bloody, with a great rent in his uniform, hanging on that tree. Oh, gracious me. And some nights, if the wind's just right and the air's cool, you'll hear his great voice throwing out his mighty curse. Oh, dear. Stay! Stay! All you souls, stay here with me forever. Oh, oh my goodness. Move, gunpowder. Get a move on. Uh, what? 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 It's a Draven Rock, you finder of a winter evening. Just as she was that night, she vanished in the storm. Oh, merciful heaven. And she comes back, and you'll hear her soft voice wailing in the darkness. Wailing in the darkness. Oh, oh move. Move, horse. Churchyard. His body was buried in the churchyard, but every night he goes riding, looking for his head. Lord, protect me. I looked right at him where his head wasn't, and I told him that my horse, Daredevil, could outrun any horse in the valley, and I offered to race him. Gracious. No head, just moonlight where his head should have been. Oh. Headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow. Oh, dear. Galloping ghost. No head. No head at all. No head at all. Headless. Headless. Headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow. Oh, oh, there he is. Gunpowder, if you ever lived up to your name, do it now. Gunpowder, this is no time to stand still. Move, you old bone bag. Oh, he's coming. Closer, closer, closer. He, he has no head. It's the headless horseman. He's carrying his head under his arm. No, 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 don't throw it. If you ever were a human being, don't throw your head at me. Don't throw your head at me. Oh, no! home from your party the other night. Ichabod? He left in a great hurry, too. Funny thing. Found gunpowder, the horse I lent him, grazing in my far pasture the next morning. I wonder what became of Ichabod. Well, uh, oh, hello, Brom. Hello, hello. Just telling Katrina I haven't seen hide nor hair of Ichabod Crane since the party the other night. No? Telling her how I found his hat in the pasture by the church. Oh, yes. And a squashed pumpkin. <laughs> Hat and squashed pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, well, Brahm, I, I don't understand. <laughs> Hat and squashed pumpkin and no Ichabod Crane. No Ichabod Crane. <laughs> guess we'll have to get a new schoolmaster. Uh, yeah, yes, I, I guess we will. <laughs> Katrina and I will want our children to be educated. <laughs> oh, Brahm, <laughs> No one is supposed to know we're going to be married. Well, I, I think it's all right. Uh, did you say squashed pumpkin about the size of a man's head? Why, yes. <laughs> now, do you suppose that that had anything to do with the strange disappearance of Mr. Ichabod Crane? <laughs> This day, legend has it in Tarrytown, New York, that Mr. Ichabod Crane took a very sudden trip. When last seen, he was headed west in a great hurry. Nobody knows just where he stopped traveling west, but if you should drop into a schoolroom in the city of San Francisco, you might hear the children to this day saying, Honesty is the best policy. And in a school in Hawaii, an island that lies far to the west of Sleepy Hollow in Tarrytown, New York, 
you can hear other children say, A penny saved is a penny earned. And travelers will tell you on good authority that somewhere in a mission school in central China, about as far west as you can go before you start heading back towards Sleepy Hollow again, certain Chinese children recite this maxim. It's deep in dark, deep night. And so we take our leave of the legended schoolmaster of Sleepy Hollow. The young man who played Ichabod in our favorite story is not only one of Hollywood's best young character actors, but also a famous songwriter whose popular tunes you've heard many times over your radio. His name is Sidney Miller. Claude Sweeten conducted the favorite story orchestra, and Walter Houston chose The Legend of Sleepy Hollow as his particular favorite story. Next week, Cloak and Dagger. Yes, we have a real swashbuckler for our next favorite story broadcast. The Three Musketeers of Alexandra Dumas. Chosen as the favorite story of the former heavyweight boxing champion of the world, Mr. Gene Tunney. If you tune this way next week, you'll meet the indestructible D'Artagnan and many other old friends from the pages of The Three Musketeers. We hope you'll be listening. Mm-hmm.